let us keep talking about a fundamental domain. Uh, recall the definition that a, a fundamental domain for a Fuchsian group gamma is uh, defined to be a subset of the hyperbolic plane uh, with these three properties, namely that uh, it is required to be uh, open and connected, uh, that in between the set and its topological closure in H sits a system of representatives of the orbits of gamma, uh, and uh, the hyperbolic area uh, of the boundary is zero, so that uh, the boundary is not very big nor uh, degenerate, right? um, in a kind of in an informal way. Um, for B, notice that we are not requiring D itself to be a fundamental set, right? but rather that uh, D together with some points in the boundary forms a fundamental set, so that, so that uh, to obtain a fundamental set from D, it uh, may be necessary, and, and uh, in most cases it's necessary to uh, adjust to it some points in the boundary, or like some segments, let's say, in, in, uh, in its boundary. Um, on the other hand, notice that this does mean that uh, different points of D are never uh, gamma equivalent. Mm -hmm. um, although different points in, uh, in, in, in its closure may be uh, equivalent. Okay. Now, uh, recall that uh, one of the reasons uh, why we are introducing the notion of fundamental domain is that we want to use them uh, to, to give a simple way of computing uh, the orbit space uh, by means of, uh, of gluings, right? by means of uh, taking a fundamental domain and kind of uh, gluing uh, uh, some, some, some sides of its uh, topological closure. Right? Similar to what we uh, uh, did for uh, for uh, obtaining the a uh, compactorus from uh, from a closed square right? by uh, taking a closed square and uh, identifying uh, opposite sides. So we want to we want to do something similar. Um, more formally, we would like uh, that. Uh, the the continuous function uh, from this uh, glued space to the orbit induced by uh, the inclusion of d bar into h uh, be a homeomorphism. Right? So we would like this function to be a homeomorphism. Um, we gave an example uh, that tells us that we should not expect this always to be the case. That is, we should not expect this function to always be a homeomorphism, um, right? And although our example didn't involve, didn't quite involve H, but rather the non-zero complex numbers, um, it, it does tells us that we should not expect this to always be a homeomorphism. And uh, later on, we are going to give a, uh, an example where it is, it is not a homeomorphism, right? Where we actually are going to take H here and not the non-zero complex numbers. Um, okay, and uh, also recall that uh, I promised that uh, the notion that the property of a fundamental domain that guarantees this one to be a homeomorphism is uh, local finiteness. And we defined uh, a, a locally finite fundamental domain to be a fundamental domain with the property that for each compact set, uh, when one considers the translates, the copies of D bar uh, that cover it, right? I mean, the, 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 the gamma translates of D bar cover K because D is a fundamental domain, right? I mean, um, D bar contains a fundamental set, right? So, so so the translates of D bar have cover uh, our, our compact set. And what we require is that, that, uh, that K can be covered with only finitely many um, um, translates of D bar. That's the notion of being locally finite. 
Um, okay, and, and, and the, the theorem that I promised is that this is indeed the property uh, that characterizes uh, when uh, this function is uh, homeomorphism, right? The function from the glued space to the orbit space. Of course, there will remain the, pro the problem of uh, showing that every Fuchsian group indeed uh, admits, indeed always admits a uh, locally finite fundamental domain. Right? I mean, so far we have not even proved that uh, any uh, Fuchsian group has a fundamental domain. Right? Uh, but so, but this, this, will, we, this we will do later on. Today, I'm going to focus on uh, on the proof of this theorem, which is going to be uh, long and uh, and with quite a few uh, subtle points. So let's start uh, uh, with the class. Uh, I start with an observation that uh, is valid for uh, arbitrary Fuchsian groups and arbitrary fundamental domains that is uh, not necessarily locally finite, fundamental domains. And it is that um, if you take a point in D and, uh, uh, and uh, any element, any, any non-identity element of gamma, then the image of Z under, under that element is not in the topological closure of D. So it's kind of completely outside, not only of D, but actually of D bar. Right? Um, so, uh, there is there is a, a, a kind of a slightly delicate um, point one has to take into account here, which is first we have to to uh, to if if I take this point and I take this non-identity element, the first thing is to discard the possibility that gamma be an elliptic transformation with z as fixed point. Um, but look, if uh, if that were the case, if uh, if gamma were an elliptic Mobius transformation with z as fixed point, then uh, well, then 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 gamma is is a rotation around that point, right? So 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 it it looks like a rotation. So that, so I can find some arbitrarily closed points to z that are moved, right? And if if uh, if z is in D, then uh, then um, then I can take I can take a, a, a arbitrary close so, so a, a small enough radius, uh, right, in such a way that both of these points are are are, are lying in this uh, in the, in this open disk contained in uh, in D, right? But then I obtain uh, here different points that are identified by gamma, right? in contradiction with uh, with what we said that that uh, different points in D are never gamma equivalent. Yeah. Okay, so this means that that uh, if I take Z in D, uh -huh, and a non-identity non element, then Z is not a fixed point of gamma. Okay, so that this automatically tells me that gamma of Z cannot be in D, uh -huh, because it would be a different point, and then it would be equivalent to Z. So that's not that's not the case, and so. It only remains to show that gamma of z uh, is not in um, in the boundary. But if it were in the boundary, then I can I can take a converge a, a sequence of elements of D converging to to gamma of z, right? But then I can uh, I can apply uh, gamma inverse, right? And when I apply gamma inverse, uh, the image of this converging sequence on their on their gamma inverse. Is a sequence converging to Z, so it eventually lands completely inside D. Right? Um, uh, but then you see, as soon as I hit D, I consider that point and the corresponding point here. And they would be different points equivalent on their uh, on their gamma, right? In contradiction to the fact that no that different elements of D cannot be gamma equivalent. Okay, so uh, so so.
So, so any non-identity element uh, takes D completely outside, uh, not only D, but D bar. Mm -hmm. uh, we automatically see that, uh, uh, as a consequence, that, that if I take uh, two elements of gamma, if these images coincide, then they, it's because they were the same element, right? I mean, indeed, consider gamma to inverse uh, gamma one of D bar. Uh -huh. And if this is equal to D bar, then it's because, uh, then, then, then take an element in D and then, uh, and then this one takes it into D bar. So this means that this one has to be the identity by what we just showed. Right. Um, okay, and similarly, uh, if they are different, then the images of, of under them of D are completely disjoint, right? Indeed, if if there was an, if, if if there if here this we had some element in this set, um, um, I mean it's a counter positive, right? Um, if you have an element here in this intersection, then apply gamma two inverse gamma one to that element, um, and we are saying that 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 to that element, and we are saying that this would lie actually in D. Okay, um, okay but then uh, but then they are the same. Right? Um, okay, uh, so 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 this is nice. So so images the images of D on their different elements of gamma are fully disjoint. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and this is valid for uh, arbitrary fundamental domes. Okay, now uh, the next observation is, that is uh, again, I have a, 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 a function group gamma, a fundamental domain D, and this time I do assume that uh, the fundamental domain is locally finite, right? And then whenever I take an element of H, uh, you know, I can take a, a compact neighborhood of Z. So it's a, com uh, it's a compact set containing an, some open disk around Z. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and then uh, because of local finiteness, uh, only finitely many translates of, of D bar intersect my, my set. Okay. Um, and then of course, among those copies, among, among those translates of D bar, uh, there are some that contain Z and some others that maybe not don't contain it. Okay, but then uh, since it's only finitely many of them, I can take some uh, some um, open disk here uh, with the property that it's closure, which is a compact disk, does not um, does not intersect the copies which do not contain Z. Okay. And so. Uh, so this, open, this, this compact disk then has the property of uh, or, or that has the property that whenever a, a translate of D bar, uh, a gamma translate of D bar intersects it, uh, it's because it contains Z. Right? So um, so I see that uh, each element is the center of a compact disk um, with these two properties. Right? I mean, only finitely many elements of gamma intersect it, sure, but also whenever uh, a translate intersects, it is because Z itself was in the translate of the bar. Um, okay, and then 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 I'm finally ready to uh, to prove uh, um, to prove the theorem um, that the function I am interested in is a homeomorphism if and only if the fundamental domain I take, I took, is um, locally finite. Right? So uh, let's prove first that uh, if, y if yota bar is a homeomorphism, then D is locally finite. We do it by contradiction. So I assume that it's a homeomorphism, and, uh, but, but I assume also that, it's, that, the, that the fundamental domain is not locally finite. I'm going to arrive uh, at a contradiction, so I'm going to arrive at something which is at the same time uh, true and false. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, I claim that that since D is not locally finite, then there is some element of H and some sequences of elements of D and elements of gamma 
with the property that that uh, the in the, the the elements of the sequence are pairwise different. The elements of, of the, the 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 sequence, the element uh, of gamma, the, the sequence of elements of gamma consists of pairwise different elements, uh, and that and that gamma n of z n is uh, forms a sequence that that converges to w. So how do I see that? Uh, so since I am assuming d is not locally finite, there is some compact uh, set with the property of um, intersecting infinitely many gamma translates of d. Oops. Infinitely many gamma translates of d, and it, it intersects them. So, so this means that that there is some se there is some some sequence of elements of d. Uh, and, and some elements and, and corresponding elements of gamma different, right? Because it, it's infinitely many different copies. Um, um, and here I'm here I'm actually using the, this fact um, that when I apply when I apply the corresponding element to each of these points to, to the corresponding point, I land in my compact in my compact set K. Okay. Um, now. Uh, when I consider this, you know, this gamma n of this of z n for these points, um, I obtain a I obtain a sequence which must have a, a convergent subsequence right, in K. Um, okay, so I take a such, such such convergent subsequence, right, and and I consider the the the, the corresponding point here. Okay, now. Those points lie in uh, in D bar right? because it, it it was the the not being locally finite means that it intersects infinitely many uh, gamma translates of D bar, right? But here I'm claiming that these are, can actually be taken in D. Okay, but so but but if, you know if if whenever one of those points one of those points that I took is actually in the boundary. Um, you see, if it's the nth term, then I can just take a, 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 a disk of radius one over n, and uh, it's going. It, it, it has at least one point in D. Okay, so I replace this point with this point. Um, okay, and here I, 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 I'm changing the, the, the sequence slightly, but it still converges, and it converges to a point um, to a point in H, right? Um, and this is how you produce that point and uh, those sequences, right? So this point would be the point of convergence here. Um, uh, and these elements, the, 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 these come from the infinitely many uh, that give me the infinitely many translates of this that intersect the compact set. Uh, and, and the points in these points they they come from from this replacement, right? From replacing uh, this one with someone some, some someone in D very close to it. Okay. Uh, now, uh, write uh, uh, K for 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 this sequence, but as a set of points, right? I mean, kind of forgetting that it's a sequence, just just considering it as a, as a set of points. And what happens is that um, every open set around W intersects uh, gamma n of d for 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 sufficiently large n for all you know for 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 an infinite tail if you will um okay yeah this is because because of this convergence um but then this implies that uh that w uh, is not in any translate of d Yes, if uh, if W were in nu of D, then together with W, we would be able to find an open disk around W completely contained in nu of D. Um, in this open disk, there would be a, there would be a, a, an entire tail of the sequence contained in this disk. Um, okay, but then for for each of them, uh, we would have you know, this would be equal to nu of something in D, okay, of some dn, let's say. 
uh, okay, but then we would have this equality for each n, which means, you see, this would be an element of dn, uh, whose image under this element of gamma is in dn. So, because of, uh, because of uh, uh, what we proved here, um, uh, this would imply this be uh, equal to the identity. But this means that that uh, infinitely many of the gamma n's would need to be equal to nu. Uh, but the, but this contradicts the fact that they are, that the, that these gamma n's are all pairwise different. Um, so W is not in nu of d. In particular, W is uh, is not. Um, uh, is not in, uh, in, in nu is not equivalent under gamma to any zn uh, because the zn's are in d. Uh, so pi of w is not in pi of k. Okay. Uh, next, next I'm going to, to to perform an analysis that will show that on the other hand pi of w has to be in pi of k and that will be our contradiction. And then uh, uh, we will be able to deduce that, that our assumption uh, is not correct. So establishing uh, that, that direction. Right now, uh, the orbit, the orbit of W, uh, we know it's discrete because because gamma is Fuchsian. Um, so we know that the orbit of W doesn't accumulate in itself. But actually, now I uh, assert that it doesn't accumulate in H at all. So not only in itself, but actually in H, it doesn't have accumulation points. Um, and indeed, suppose, suppose it has some accumulation points, let's say Z, mm -hmm. uh, and so, and around Z, then take uh, an open, an open set, uh, V, which would be this, this one, uh, uh, this orange one here, uh, with the property that, uh, only finitely many elements uh, of gamma um, do not take V sufficiently far away. Um, okay, so it's only finitely many of them, right? Um, okay, but you see Z is a, a accumulation point, so, so there are infinitely many elements in the orbit. So each of them is of the form gamma of W for some gamma in gamma. Uh -huh. um, okay, and it's infinitely many of them, right? So uh, uh, and and there's a, and and then and since V is open, there is there is an entire tail of of this sequence uh, uh, of elements of the orbit of W uh, completely uh, contained in. Uh, in V, right? But okay, but then take any of them, uh -huh, and then the rest, you know, all of them are in the orbit of W, so you can go apply the inverse to, to get W and then apply the uh, transformation that takes W there. And so this means that, um, that V intersects the, the image, right? I mean, because this point then is in, in V, but it's also in the image under some point under some element of gamma, okay. um, and it's infinitely many of them, so you can find then an infinitely many elements of gamma uh, that do not take V sufficiently far away. Um, but this is uh, this contradicts how this, this set was was uh, taken, right? How this V was taken. So indeed. Um, uh, you, it cannot accumulate in this point Z. Um, okay, uh, but then, but then this means that uh, the Z, the set of the of Z of the set N, that is K, it cannot cannot accumulate in H, uh, because indeed suppose it accumulates in some point Z. Okay, um, then what we know is that the 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 um, sequence of the gamma ends of Z ends converges to W. So, so uh, for each epsilon, you, you see, for each epsilon, we can take, um, we can take a tail such that this distance is uh, less than epsilon. 
Uh -huh. But then, when you apply uh, gamma n inverse, uh, you see, uh, you, you, well, on the one hand, you obtain uh, Zn, uh -huh. but then in the, in the ball of radius epsilon lies a gamma n inverse of W, right? So if, this, if the sequence of Zn converges to, to Z, um, then uh, you see, together with together with that sequence, uh, the sequence of the gamma n inverses of W also converges to Z, right? Because uh, because it's it's very it it goes very close to the Z n. Um, but we have just seen that uh, that this one cannot accumulate in any point in H. Okay, so we conclude we deduce that this uh, this k this z which is k. Uh, does not accumulate in H, so in particular it contains all of its accumulation points right, by, by vacuity. So uh, it's closed in D. Okay, so it's closed, um, but you see, but uh, it is a subset of D, so we can actually uh, uh, apply pi uh, bar to it. We call them this diagram. Um, okay. Uh, and since it's contained in D, uh, it actually satisfies this property that it it coincides k coincides with the with the inverse image on the on the pi bar of its image, um, which then means this means that then that this is closed that pi bar of k is closed by the by because uh, because here we are giving the the quotient topology the identification topology. Um, Okay, so it's closed, uh -huh. but then you see pi of k, k is contained here, k is contained here, and pi of k uh, is iota of pi of k, which is iota bar preceded by pi bar of k. Okay. And we are assuming that iota bar is a homeomorphism. So, uh, so we see then that pi of k is closed in uh, in the orbit space. Okay, so it's closed there, so it contains its accumulation points. But you see, uh, we have this thing here. W is the limit of those, and pi is continuous. So pi of w is equal to the limit of pi of the gamma n z n. Okay, but pi of gamma n z n is equal to pi of z n. So this means that pi of w is the limit of these elements uh, of pi of k. So this one lives in pi of k. And then uh, we have our contradiction, right? At the same time, uh, we know that pi of w cannot be in pi of k, and we see that it must be in pi of k. Right? So this means that this assumption must be wrong. So if uh, if this if iota bar is an, an a homeomorphism, then d must be locally finite. Okay. And now uh, the converse. Uh, uh, so we know what do we know so far. We know that this function is continuous. We know that it's bijective. Um, and we know, yeah, we know it's continuous and bijective. So in order for it to be a homeomorphism, we only need to show that it is an open map. Mm -hmm. So we take an open uh, subset. Mm -hmm. We suppose that D is locally finite and take an open subset of the domain of, I, of iota bar. Mm -hmm. So now the, this one is, of course, surjective so, uh, and continuous. So. Uh, pi, pi inverse of A is an open subset of D bar, uh, so it has to be of the form D bar intersection an open subset of H. Okay, and moreover, when I apply pi to this inverse image, I obtain the whole of A. Mm -hmm. I hit the whole of A because of uh, subjectivity. Okay, now. Uh, 
notice that this this a priori i mean this this set may fail to be open in h right we know it's open in d bar but 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 it may fail to be open in h so this so each of these sets for each fixed gamma uh, this set may fail to be open uh -huh. so we don't quite know if it's kind of a priori if this is open mm -hmm. and i claim it is uh -huh. so take any point uh, in, in in the set that is fix any gamma in gam in our in our uh, group gamma capital gamma and take a point in the corresponding uh, in the corresponding uh, set right z naught okay now i'm going to move back to the bar so so i apply gamma inverse mm -hmm. so now i'm in d bar intersect b mm -hmm. and since d bar is locally finite uh, as we saw earlier, there is uh, a compact uh, disk around W naught uh, with the property that there are uh, only finitely many um, tra gamma translates of the bar intersects that compact disk, and with the property that if, that for if uh, if um, for any uh, translate that intersects that compact disk, W naught is necessarily in there, right? So let's say take that compact disk and uh, and just take the the interior and that is an open hyperbolic disk with the proper with this property that this this is finite so that this this open disk intersects only finitely many gamma translates of d bar and still has the property that that uh, uh, any translate that intersects it necessarily contains w naught. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Now S is finite, uh -huh. so we can uh, uh, enumerate its elements. Let's say uh, uh, new zero, new one, etc., to new m, uh, starting in the identity. Let's say, mm -hmm. uh, and then we know. You see, we uh, uh, we know that that W naught is in nu of d bar. Uh -huh. So this means that. That, I mean, in new Z, in 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 new one of in new one of the bar and blah 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 new m of the bar. So this means that when I apply the in, the new inverses, they all lie in the bar. Um, okay. Uh, so they are in the domain of pi bar. So we can apply pi bar to each of them, uh -huh. and uh, all all of them, of course, have to be identified with w naught. Right. So, uh, what I obtain is the same point of uh, of A, right? Because uh, W not W not is in D bar intersect B. So, so in, in D bar intersect B. So when I apply uh, pi bar, I land in A. Um, okay. So they all give me the same point in A. Uh huh. Um. Uh, which means that that uh, that all of them, that all of each of these points is in d bar intersect b. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, w naught is in b. W, uh, uh, I mean, w one, w naught is in b. No one inverse of w naught is in b, which means that w naught is in no one of b. Etc. W naught is in nu m of b. Right. Okay. And now, now this is the moment where we use the fact that that it's only finitely many of them, uh, because um, then we can, if necessary, uh, shrink the radius of this hyperbolic disk so that together with W, this disk is contained in b. And also in new one of B, and also etc., and also in new M of B. Okay. So we obtain this. Um, but you see, then, then uh, uh, this is um, this is then uh, an open subset of this union. Right? Um, and uh, and we are done. 
right? Because that then then, then uh, this is open in H, um, which means then then uh, that uh, iota of iota bar of A is open in uh, in the orbit in the orbit space H modulo gamma, right? And we are done, assuming that uh, D was locally finite. We have proved that uh, iota bar is uh, is an open map. Um, okay, and that now, um, like even though this example doesn't quite fall in, uh, you see, it doesn't quite fall into this this uh, the statement of this theorem. I mean, at least in the way it is stated, um, because this theorem we, we have stated it only for actions of discrete groups on H, not, not on the non-zero complex numbers. Um, I think it's, uh, it's useful to see that, that uh, this um, local finiteness fails in this example, right? And what is easy to see is that uh, the circle of radius um, uh, three halves uh, intersects infinitely many trans gamma translates of this D, right? Because otherwise, suppose not, then with uh, then multiplying this circle with finitely many powers of two, uh, we would obtain uh, uh, representatives in uh, in um, in D, mm -hmm. but with finitely many. So, but so so so. So we would obtain uh, a bounded set, right? But here you can see that that when you when you approach this point, uh, and you take the, then the corresponding representative in D uh, is unbounded. So so you need infinitely many powers uh, of two. Uh, to, to, to be able to choose representatives of, um, of, of, the, of the elements of this one. And this, this means that then uh, infinitely many um, translates of D intersect this uh, compact circle. Right? So, so, so this fundamental set, this fundamental domain is not uh, locally finite. Um, Okay, now, okay, now we have just established uh, that this is a homeomorphism if and only if the fundamental domain we, uh, we are working with is locally finite. Um, okay, but you see, is there a, a simple criterion to decide whether a fundamental domain is locally finite? The answer is yes, and it's uh, this, uh, this theorem that if you give me a Fuchsian group and you give me a convex fundamental domain, so hyperbolically convex fundamental domain, and this convex fundamental domain has the property that uh, for every element in the boundary of D, there is a non-identity element with the property that its image is also in the boundary, then D is locally finite. Okay, and now here, just just notice that that for in, that that if if it, it it could be as well that Z is a, the fixed point of an elliptic element, in which case uh, of an elliptic element of gamma, in which case uh, the corresponding gamma would not move it and still have this property. Um, so so I'm so in other words, here I'm not saying that every Z is equivalent to a different point, right? Because it could be it could be the fixed point of an elliptic element. But I'm just saying that it's equivalent to some point in the boundary for some non-identity element. Okay? So in particular, if I take an element of the boundary which is not a fixed point of an elliptic element of gamma, then uh, then it has to be equivalent to to a different point. Okay, um, okay so that's it for today.